watching Paint Dry. Today we're going to go over how you prep a room for painting. Now here's a look at some of the equipment you're going to need. Now the very first thing you want to do when you're prepping a room for painting is you want to clear the room of everything. Okay, get the bed out, get the dressers out, maybe you put your beds in the basement for a few days and sleep down there. The dressers go in the living room. In the long run, it just saves a lot of time if you're not trying to work around stuff and move stuff away and do one wall at a time, etc. Now after you remove the pictures from the walls, if you're going to put them right back up where they were, you can leave the nail there and just kind of paint around it if you want. Of course, if you're not going to put them back up or you're going to move them, you want to pull out all the nails and screws. Now the next thing you want to do is just give the room a quick cleaning, okay? Take the vacuum with the brush attachment around, vacuum out the closet shelves, the windows, the baseboard, the heater, just give everything a real quick cleaning. Okay, the next step is to spackle any nail holes in the walls or the trim. Now one thing you might want to do is make what I call a spackle ghost. Now here's how you make a spackle ghost. Take a big scoop of spackle and stick it right in the middle of a piece of your painter's plastic. Then turn it into a ghost. Twist it. Put a piece of tape right around the neck. Then take a nail and poke a little hole right in the end of it. Now this is going to dispense spackle in a way that's much easier to get into little nail holes than if you're trying to scoop it out of the bucket every time. Now for little nail holes and thumbtack holes, just take a little bit of spackle on your finger, rub it right in there, and then get it all off the surface. Now if you have a bigger hole like this, here's what you want to do. Now the first thing you want to do is just take your finger and get any loose stuff off of there. Then put a good amount of spackle onto your putty knife here. Go right over like that. And then as few wipes as possible. And then you can even take your finger and kind of smooth out the wall around. Now, of course, you're going to want to spackle any nail holes in your trim. Now, here's how you do that. First of all, take the tip of your finger, rub the hole to get any loose debris away from the edge. Then put a little bit of spackle on your finger and push it into that hole. Then put a little more on your finger and push it in again as hard as you can and then even a little bit more and push it in one more time. Now what this does is you push so much spackle into the hole that you overfill it and when it dries it actually pushes itself back out and that means that when you come to sand it later you're sanding a raised edge down which is a much better way to try to make it look smooth. If you don't put enough spackle in there the spackle will shrink back into the hole and you'll have a depression that you'll never be able to get rid of. Okay, now after the spackles have time to dry, it's time to sand. Now you can use sandpaper if you want, maybe 180, 220 grit. I kind of like these sanding sponges though, they're real nice, they move quickly, they're great for getting in little edges. Just like that, and really all you're doing here is cuffing up the surface a little bit so that it will accept the next coat of paint. Now if you spackled nail holes, of course, you're going to want to get those sanded smooth. If you spackled big holes in the wall, you're going to go want to hit them with the sanding sponge real quickly. If you're going to be painting doors, give the door surface a hit with the sanding sponge. And here I've got this fuse box, it's metal, and I'm going to paint this too because it's kind of ugly, so I just wanted to make it try to blend into the wall as much as possible. So I'm going to hit it with the sanding sponge, and then I'm going to hit it with a coat of primer with an aerosol can, and then it'll be all ready to accept a coat of latex paint. Of course, in addition to the door casings and the windows, uh, if you've got baseboard or a crown molding, you're going to want to give that a cuff with the sanding sponge.
Okay, now after you're done with the spackling and the sanding and the vacuuming, now it's time to start caulking, all right? Now you're gonna to wanna to bring a little bucket of water with you with a rag in it so that you can keep dipping your fingers. That really helps you manipulate the caulk. Now I recommend a dripless caulk gun, and here's how you wanna cut the tip off. Just go back maybe eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, Cut it off right there at a 45 degree angle and you should be good to go. In a room like this, there really isn't too much caulking to do, okay? I'm going to go check the edge of where every piece of trim meets the wall. If there's any crack there, I'm going to caulk it and then I'm going to rub it in with my finger just like this. Run it down, get your finger a little wet and just rub that caulk right in there like that. You can do it real quick. Now you want to check all the joints in the door casings and the window casings, places like this. If you've got that old brown 1970s wood trim and you're going to paint it white, then you've got a lot of caulking to do on your door casings and your window casings. But really it's just a matter of going around and taking a real close look at everything. Anywhere you see a crack, you're going to want to get some caulk in there because those cracks will show up later. time to mask the room so that you can roll the ceiling and the walls. First of all you'll notice that I've draped an awning across the top of all the windows and door frames. Now I've also masked the top of this baseboard heater. I put a couple pieces on the door to prevent the door handles from getting speckled when I'm rolling the ceiling. Of course, I've put a piece of tape over all the light switches and all the outlets. Masked off any thermostats or anything else on the wall. Probably a good idea to mask off the light fixture and make sure it's covered with plastic. Okay, once you've got everything masked, then there's only one thing left to do in prepping the room, and that's priming. Now the thing to remember about priming is, you want to be a little surgical about it. You want to take a brush and very carefully apply a little bit of primer on them, and then make sure you feather it out so that it doesn't show up later. Now if you've got big patches on the wall that need to be primed, I suggest using a weenie roller. That would help them blend in. If you start making big brush strokes in the middle of the wall, that might show up later. Now, for most interior priming, just a good latex interior stain blocking primer will do. Okay, so now you know how to prep a room for painting. Now the best thing about prepping a room for painting is that after you've done all this work, the actual painting seems like a treat. Now to see my video on how to paint the ceiling and video on how to paint the walls and the trim, go to my website howtopaintahouserite.com where you'll find all those videos and more and a lot of other helpful information that I've put together to help you paint your house right.